Right, obviously, my name's Ashley. That doesn't actually look like me, does it? Um, I might have done a wee bit of skin smoothing and aperture. I'm just going to do a really quick introduction to myself. I take a lot of photos. Some of you might have even stumbled upon my girl with a camera photo blog. I like to kind of focus on natural light portrait photography. I can deadlift 75 kilograms. This, I'm quite proud of that. I like being strong. That's actually just 65 in the photo though. But 75 is 11.8 stone. So if any of you weigh 11.8 stone and you don't believe me, you, I'll lift you up later on, okay? <coughs> and I'm definitely a dog person. That's my wee pal, Indy. Yeah. Career-wise, I'm company director at Brokers Direct, which is a small property insurance business. We specialise in landlord insurance, but we're actually expanding pretty soon into more general insurance, so that's exciting. In fact, this website that you see right here is currently, as I speak, undergoing a major overhaul, so that's exciting. Company director isn't actually as impressive as it sounds because we are such a small operation. I could have given myself any title and it wouldn't actually change what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I do tend to get stuck into a bit of everything, which if anybody here works in a small business, you know how it is. To give you an idea of what size we are, there's a call center in London. We use my agent's call center for customer quotes, renewals, that kind of thing. And then there's me in Glasgow with my dog. <laughs> I'm not going to stand here today and talk about insurance in terms of regulations and schemes. So don't worry about that. That stuff is really boring. But let me at least kick things off by giving you a bit of an overview of Brokers Direct and our company history. We source several quotes from different insurers and present them to our customers. We're different to a comparison website because we actually have to build relationships with insurers and negotiating rates. Oops. You'll hear me talk about my agents have already mentioned once. Think of them as my link to these insurers. The business has been around for about 13 years, under one form or another. We did have a name change at one point. I'm 26, so obvious, if you do basic maths, at 13, I was not involved in the business. I'm not sure what I was doing at 13, but I was still wearing a training bra, so it's pretty obvious, I wasn't involved in insurance. It was my dad's business. That's my dad, and that's actually the hallway where the whole Brokers Direct operation was born, hallway in our house. Prior to Brokers Direct, my family went bankrupt. We lost everything as you do with bankruptcy. We had our house taken off us, and it's been really amazing for me to have watched my parents rebuild their lives to the extent that they have. My dad in particular is a big inspiration to me. He had a job part-time as an estate agent. He had another job working for the Ministry of Defence, finding people homes. It's all property related. And then, for the rest of his time, he started selling landlord insurance. We were one of the first to offer instant online quotes for landlords and students. Back then, a lot of insurers wouldn't touch landlords because it was considered quite risky. You have a, a stranger living in your property. They won't have the same level of care for it that you do. So for us to do that, 
and to do so with instant online quotes. We were in the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing, and the business took off. It was a big success. We had major brands like Royal Bank of Scotland and that West handing out our phone number when people came to them looking for insurance, the phone number that would divert you through to this modest hallway in a three-bed flat in Kilmundanoon. My dad was able to quit both his jobs, focus on Brokers Direct full-time. We even expanded. We hired people to work remotely. Everything was peachy. Fast forward to 2005, and this is when we really started to see the rise in popularity of aggregator sites. You'll know the type. I bet every person in this room has, at one point or another, used a comparison website. Go compare, compare the market whose advertising is so effective I accidentally called them. Compare the meerkat and the slide, and confused. Com. I hate that go compare guy. He is so annoying. I wish that he weighed 11.8 stones so that I could deadlift him and then just fling him away somewhere that I wouldn't have to ever see him again. He's really annoying. But these guys have changed the way people shop for insurance. And nowadays, everybody's flocking to comparison websites to take care of their insurance needs. And as you can imagine, it has made things very difficult for us. In 2005 was when we really started to see them gain traction. It was quite a challenging year overall for the business. And personally, because it was also the year my dad died and left Brokers Direct behind. I had no idea what slide to use for that, by the way, so. I was 18. I am very lucky to have had 18 years with my dad, because I have friends who haven't even had that, so I feel very grateful, I'm not complaining. But I had just finished college by a couple of weeks where I'd studied drumming. It's a really terrible picture of me playing the drums. And despite there being no correlation between music and insurance, I found myself in my dad's office the day after he died, reading his work email, having a look at the notes in his desk, and I knew, I knew how my dad felt about that business. It meant a lot to him. It was his baby. He'd often call it his baby. And so I returned the day after and the next day and so on and so forth. And here I am, over seven years later. I don't want to portray myself as the knight in shining armour who rode in and saved the business from doom or whatever the female equivalent of that would be, I don't know. Because that couldn't be further from the truth. I had no knowledge of the product we were selling. I had no skill set to contribute to the business. I could play a mean samba on the drum kit, but beyond that, I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't particularly good at anything. And I had as much confidence as any chubby 18-year-old girl does. And if you've never been a chubby 18-year-old girl, really not much confidence. But I did have one thing, something that I think a lot of people in this room will have. In fact, something that I know a lot of people in this room do have. I had passion, a passion to try. 
And passion, in my opinion, is more powerful than knowledge because passion can lead to that. I believe that one person with passion is capable of being much more effective than a handful of people who may have more experience but really don't care all that much. And if you have that wee fire in your belly and you'll know, you'll know if you've got it because you can physically feel it. It's like a, it's a hunger, it's a drive. I love that feeling. If you have that, people will not stand in your way of you going to where you want to go to. And circumstances will not stop you from getting to where you want to go to. And so that really marked the beginning of my journey, one that I'm still very much on with Brokers Direct. The UK insurance industry is huge. It's a highly competitive and very cutthroat industry. It's the largest in Europe. It's the third largest in the world and it's worth 35 billion. Basically, it's a monster. Do you like what I did there? I had to put Sully from Monsters Inc. in my slide somewhere. And if I looked at the bigger picture, if I looked at my competitors, Direct Line, for example, huge company, thousands of employees and years of experience behind them, if I looked at them, and what they were capable of. And then I looked at me, the chubby 18 year old girl who really didn't know much. I'd feel so overwhelmed by the whole thing that I'd never get any work done because it would seem so insurmountable. And so I learned very quickly to focus on the small accomplishments. Focus on the small victories that you achieve on a day-to-day -day basis, no matter how minor, because those are the ones that keep you inching towards that big goal. In fact, just last week I came across this video by accident and it really resonated with me. And this quote in particular, well, this paragraph. You don't try to build a wall. You don't set out and say, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that has ever been built. You say, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. You do this every single day and soon you have a wall. Guess who said that? I bet nobody can guess. Will Smith, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I didn't think Will Smith was a particularly insightful individual, but that really struck a chord with me. As you can probably imagine, the business has been very sentimental to me. It was a link to my dad. And because of that, I found myself allowing my relationship with him to influence everything I was doing. Pretty much on a daily basis, I'd find myself thinking, would my dad have done this? What would my dad think of this? And ultimately, the big question, where did my dad want to take his business? It was a destructive attitude to have because it, it meant that I was never changing Brokers Direct to develop with me. I was never changing the business to grow with the insurance industry. 
And inevitably, as a result, the business did grow very stagnant for a number of years. I'm ashamed to say that. I had to flip this mental switch in my head. I had to accept ownership of the business, but more importantly, I had to step outside of my comfort zone. Comfort zones are evil. They are evil. And as morbid as this quote is, I wholeheartedly agree with it. Comfort zones are plush-lined coffins. When you stay in your plush-lined coffins, you die. Yes, this is very applicable to all of life, not just business. So with this change in my mentality, having accepted ownership of the business and my confidence growing as it does, the more you do something, the better you get at it, the more comfortable you become, the more you enjoy it. I started, well, sorry, I've missed a bit out, but when I, accept, when I said to you, that I had to change this mental attitude in my head and accept ownership of the business. I realized, it took me a number of years, but I did finally realize what I want to do with Brokers Direct. And I said this on Twitter fairly recently, so some of you might have seen it already, but I don't want Brokers Direct to be just another insurance company that sells policies through comparison websites and Google AdWord campaigns. I want Brokers Direct to build genuinely helpful products for property owners to use. Ultimately, I want Brokers Direct to be at the top of our game with tech. And I'm doing the former with things like Lodger, which is a simple property rental management tool for landlords. There are plenty of these on the market. I've used a lot of them, but they're all incredibly bloated. They cram every possible feature imaginable into them. I wanted to build something that was targeted at small to mid-sized landlords and make it really accessible to use. So with my confidence growing and moving forward, I started to realize something about the insurance industry that's probably very true for some of the industries you guys are in. I know you're kind of designers and developers, but like me, you might work in a specific industry. I started to realize how backwards the insurance industry is when it comes to technology. Quote systems, which are the backbone of your business. Quote systems are the backbone of an insurer's business. And yet, they're often very tedious to look at. They can be slow to load. They spit out errors at you but don't necessarily tell you what the problem is. They fail with simple things like validation. And at the time of doing my research for this talk, there was not one quote system on the market optimized for mobile. What I'm trying to say is, they could be better. And um, of course I voiced my concern about this. I said, well, why aren't we putting something out there that's optimized for mobile? And you know, and why does this happen when you click on that and it doesn't make any sense? And can't we just polish this whole feature up? But guess what? Nobody listens to you if you complain. For people to 
listen to you, they have to respect you, and you're never going to win any respect by sitting back and having a good whinge about everything. You win respect by, of course, highlighting a problem, but you better present a possible solution to that problem. Basically, if you're going to complain about something, please do something about it. Now, I'm a very black and white person, see? And um, probably to the point where it is actually a flaw in some areas of my life. If I don't like something, I change it. If I'm really not happy with something, I'll get rid of it. I thought, okay, I'm not happy with the state of quote systems on the market. So I'll build my own. That makes total sense. That's a very logical progression, isn't it? I'm not happy with the state of quote systems on the market. So I'll build my own. But there was one minor problem. I didn't know how to code. <laughs> I'd never built anything in my life beyond a static HTML website with vanilla CSS. I like that dog. But going back to what I said earlier about if you have that wee fire in your belly, circumstances don't stop you from getting to where you want to go. So I thought, okay, I'll learn to code, and then I'll build my own quote system. <laughs> I'm really not clever. I've always just depended on my drive, my passion to get me from A to B. So admittedly, I did choose to learn <laughs> Ruby on Rails because I heard people singing its praises in terms of its simplicity. I heard people say that they learned Ruby on Rails and had their first web app up and running within one day. That did not happen for me. This was a tremendously steep learning curve. Coming at this as a non-programmer, tremendously steep learning curve. But I wanted to make it happen because being a small business, it isn't financially feasible for us to delegate everything. And especially, development costs can be particularly high. So it's amazing for me to be able to have an idea and make it come to life. And also, with the state of the insurance industry, what I said earlier about the comparison websites, they have made it very difficult. And it is really hard for us to compete on price. So I need to find a different angle. And I want my angle to be technology. So this is how I'm learning to code. It's common sense, but I made a commitment. Obviously, the key to learning anything is consistency, even if it is just 20 minutes a day. And I speak from experience because I approached learning to program in the worst way possible. I'd find myself spending four days intensely looking at tutorials and reading books and following screencasts. And then seven days would pass and I hadn't looked at anything Rails related. And then I'd spend another two days intensely looking at screencasts and reading books. And then 10 days would pass and I hadn't looked at anything Rails related. So really, I had to make a commitment. Having, I almost fell over there. Having a specific product to build is what made all the difference for me. I think I did have the idea for building the quote system and Lodger at the same time. For whatever reason, I decided to start working in Lodger first. And that's really made all the difference for me. Having a real product to build that I can I can, um, and instead of flitting aimlessly between tutorials and I have something tangible to apply it to. I'm not afraid to look stupid. 
I don't mind asking questions. And fortunately, the Rails community is so supportive. There are a number of individuals who've helped me. All of that with a $9 subscription to Railscast and you're good to go. So now it has got to the point where I can actually piece together enough bits of code to make things work. I'm going to show you a wee demo of the quote system that I've built. This is just a prototype. I must emphasize that all of the figures used are just dummy figures. Can anybody see that? Why is it not playing, Gavin? Oh, is it? Oh, right. Um, OK, so my job, in its simplest form, is to give you a competitive quote as quickly and as painlessly as possible. And insurers get so bogged down on the competitive pricing that they actually completely overlook the whole process of delivering people their quotes. I wanted to strip out all of the bloat. If it isn't required for me to calculate your premium, I do not want to know it. Paddy Donnelly designed it, and he's a very clever designer. With his design, we managed to minimize what was a three-page process to get your quote down to just one page, because we calculate it and render it in the sidebar. And I've made it responsive as well. Woo. Yay! What a clap. <laughs> so, I looked at this and as biased as I may be, I looked at it and I thought, this is a step in the right direction. It's a step in the right direction. And I thought, okay, I'm going to take this to London. That's me going to London. That's me in London. And I'm going to demo it to my agents. I didn't tell them that I'd been working on this. I never really tell them what I'm working on. I just kind of pop up in London and go, guys, I built something. And I was really nervous about showing them it because it's funny. The two things that I'm really passionate about in my job, design and technology, are the two things that are against me in the insurance industry, or so it feels anyway. From where I'm standing, it looks like these are the things that nobody else in the insurance industry really cares about. So I went to London, I showed them my wee quote system. Oh, there's my bit of paper. And they absolutely loved it. They loved the simplicity of it. They specifically said that they liked the wee sliders and icons. And I don't think that they'd actually ever seen anything built with media queries before. In fact, they loved it so much that they suggested I come and work with them to build something similar to this for 1,800 other brokers to use. Now that's crazy because let's just think about this for a second. By identifying something I wasn't happy with and doing something about it, I could possibly change the way 1,800 brokers sell their insurance, but more importantly, I could potentially change the way hundreds of thousands of people buy insurance. That's exciting. If that does not motivate you to act upon the things that you might be complaining about, I don't know what will. I've stood here and talked quite negatively about the insurance industry. But 
I believe, perhaps naively, but I do, I genuinely believe that if you do something you love every day to the best of your ability, if you do something you love to the best you can, success will never be far off because people are rewarded for their hard work, for the effort and for the passion that they put into things. And why, why settle for anything less when you can do things that little bit better and possibly even pave the way to doing something remarkable? Yes, the insurance industry is quite backwards when it comes to technology, but do you know what that means? That means that there is an excellent opportunity here for the clever people, for the passionate people, to disrupt a 35 billion industry. And you guys are the clever people. Thank you.